Good morning, and welcome to St. Elizabeth. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is our pastor, Father Carroll, and his intention is Thomas Quill. Please join me in singing our opening hymn, number 425, Sing a New Church. We'll sing the first three verses. Again, number 425, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning. Now, welcome to our scouts this morning on Scout Sunday. If you can't tell, they're having breakfast after this. I can smell the bacon. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Don't 
Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of people from all of Judea and Jerusalem and the coast region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they ex exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are now filled, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in the same way. The Gospel of the Lord. The best things in life are worth waiting for. The best things in life are not things. It's not about the things you have. It's about the thing that you have. The thing that you have a hunger and a thirst for God that you know can be satisfied. St. Luke's Jesus is a contradiction. The Messiah, the one who would save his people, 
is one of them. This is a contradiction to the Old Testament advice that we hear in the first reading, not to trust in human beings, but to trust in God alone. What will it take to believe that God has been revealed in someone who looks like us? How can God be a human being? Jesus has a little bit of a PR problem he has to change to get people to realize that God has revealed himself in a human being who has come to show us salvation. Have you had any experiences when something that you always believed in wasn't exactly so? Maybe upside down? The thing itself didn't change, but the way that you looked at it did. The Beatitudes presented here in Luke's Gospel this morning balance blessings and woes, leaving the listener to make a decision, which side am I on? And note that the Gospel tells us that before presenting these Beatitudes, Jesus gathers among the people on level ground, and he looks up at his disciples. Imagine Jesus, he's gathered in the crowd, and he raises his eyes to his disciples, kind of saying, Look, see me? See where I am? He looks at his disciples. He speaks to them, the leaders. And he tells them that they just might have to look at this a different way. This man, this appearing human being, asks you to put trust in him. Following him would demand a revolutionary, revolutionary kind of spirit. Not to change people's expectation when it comes to God, but to look at it in a different way. Do not trust in this man for the man that he is, but trust in this man for the one who he reveals to you, a God and a Father that he knows. As we go forward, Jesus tells his disciples, we will remain with those who experience emptiness in life, those who long to be filled. We will be with the poor, with the hungry, the weeping, and the hated. For those who satisfy themselves by a constant search for pleasure are not looking for God and therefore will not see him, even if he's right in front of their face. Rejoice and leap for joy, Jesus says, for when they persecute you for your belief, they acknowledge that you have a belief and they see something that without you they cannot. So Jesus invites his disciples to flip the tables with him and proclaim God in their midst like they would never have imagined, but to find themselves following. The best things in life are those experiences that move us, that shape us, that give us real joy, because they open us up for how we can already recognize that we are already blessed and beyond any feeling of woe. Feelings of emptiness, hunger, tears, hatred will be no more. Because with the Lord, we just don't see it that way. Hoping in the Lord is like the tree planted beside waters, like the first reading in the psalm reminded us this morning, that stretches out its roots to endure any kind of fear, any kind of distress, and produces fruit from within. Blessed are you who see that and find hope in that. Stretch out, see it another way, and see how near you are to the divine, and your hope and your life will be blessed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Rich and poor alike, God calls us together as sons and daughters. Let us pray to our Father with sincere hearts. For all who serve the gospel, that the Beatitudes be boldly proclaimed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hunger and thirst, for outcasts, for those who grieve, that they find comfort in God's living presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are discouraged, that they find new hope through this community of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need our prayers, especially the sick, those who care for them, those who serve our country and community, and all of the intentions for which we have been asked to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may enjoy the kingdom prepared for them, especially Thomas Quill, for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And at the end of this National Marriage Week and on the eve of Valentine's Day, we give thanks for all of you who give witness to the sacrament of marriage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear our prayers as you accept the sacrifice of your crucified and risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. All you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people, 
you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleased you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join me in singing our communion hymn, number 354, Bread of Life, number 354. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Continue to enjoy the snow this morning and a Super Bowl game and probably some more Olympics and Valentine's Day. And then all of a sudden we're in the middle of February somehow. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing our closing hymn, number 425, Sing a New Church. We'll sing the last two verses.
Thank you.